So our Garuda Mudra is the left hand um, in front of the heart, palm facing in and the thumb facing upward, yep. So the palm of the left hand facing the, the heart. And we're gonna move it to our throat. And then our right hand just kind of hooks on that thumb. So you know when you're like making that, the bird, yeah. So we're gonna do that left palm facing in, the right thumb hooks. And we're gonna bring it in front of our throat chakra, just in front of the throat. Gonna relax the elbows and the shoulders and finding your comfortable seat. If you want, you can lie down and you could even rest them on your throat, I'm sure. My Garuda Mudra invites freedom into our space. So creating the sacred space for ourselves today. Inviting the freedom to love. The freedom to move. The freedom to gather with friends. The freedom to just be. The freedom to be in a space where there's no right or wrong. The freedom to choose. The freedom to be exactly where we are. So if you're just joining our left hand facing, palm facing the heart and the right thumb hooks like an eagle in front of the throat. Inviting openness for loving kindness today. And as we open up to loving kindness, maybe we bring to our heart space someone, something that we want to be open to send loving kindness to because sometimes it's not easy, right? So let's bring that openness, that freedom of loving kindness. Now, if you're on your backs, undo your Garuda Mudra, let your palms, your hands come to the earth. If you're seated, let's make our way down to the earth and bring our palms to the sky. Kind of surrendering, just this act of surrender to open, lying down, palms either to the sky or down. As we lie here, reminding ourselves that this is our sacred space. This is our sacred time. There's not a deadline here. There's not an expectation. It's an invitation to be an invitation to receive. And now from here, on our back still, let's bring our right arm up, back of the hand to the earth, the palm to the sky. 
Then really reach through the right fingertips and reach through the heels. Maybe stretching through the right armpit. And that left hand is a little active. It's not really pressing into the floor, but it's active as the fingertips reach towards the left toes. It's at the side of the body, but the left hand is reaching. So maybe you feel the top of the left shoulder. And that right arm reaches up. And now let's let go of any effort. Feel the body relax again. And now float that right hand across the sky, the right palm coming to the ground. And then the left arm sweeps up. Yep. And that back of that left hand reaches up. So now we're going to reach through the left fingertips. And then we'll kind of activate that right arm to reach for the heel. Maybe the back body is active as we reach in opposing directions with the hands. And now release any effort, let the hands come down and float the left hand across the sky. And now both hands are at the side, maybe the palms are down, maybe the palms are up. On an exhale, let's bring our feet to the floor, the knees shine towards the sky, and then lift those hips so the low back comes to the ground. So maybe the whole back is on the ground. And those feet can be maybe hip distance, and they can be as far away from those glutes as you want. The further away the feet are, the more you're going to feel it in those hamstrings. So maybe you can even just play with it. Have that openness to explore. So now press the feet down, active feet. Exhale, drive those glutes up. Let's float the arms up and reach overhead. Keep those hips lifted. Reach through the fingertips. You might feel those shoulders shrug into the ears. And then now let's exhale, lower down. The hips, the back, as the hands float across the sky and palms come to the earth. And when those palms get to the earth, kind of slide those palms towards the heels. Feel those shoulders kind of drop. Now exhale, drive the glutes up, float the arms up overhead. Those hips are lifted, reach the hands, pass the front of the mat, the shoulders might touch the ears. Exhale, lower down the back, float those hands across the sky like a rainbow. And when those palms get down, slide those palms across the earth to reach for the heels, reaching for the feet. Feel those shoulder blades open on top. And now exhale, let go of any effort. Leave the palms down. And just exhale, drive those glutes up. Maybe you want to reach the palms overhead. Those arms can come up, but don't reach this time. Let's just flow and then flow those glutes down, those palms down. And then we'll inhale or exhale, lift the hips, float the arms, press the feet down, and then lower down, arms back. Let's do that one more time. Driving the hips up, palms float through the sky, hands above the head, and exhale, lower everything down. If you hug the knees into the chest and rock side to side, massaging that low back. Maybe you just lie there with your feet to the sky. I know one of you here, this is your favorite, <laughs> or at least one of your favorites. Yep, I see you doing it right now. <laughs> you can hug the knees in if you want. Just feeling into your energy. Maybe you want to let those legs kind of drain. Maybe you want to give some love to that low back. This is this part of our practice where we can feel into our body and we can think of how these shapes feel and we can make that choice, that empowering agency that we have in our yoga practice to choose. Now from here, maybe bend those knees so they maybe come towards the elbows, reach the hands on the left side of the foot, find a happy baby. Maybe sway side to side. Maybe you extend one leg to sky, place a hand on your belly, and you have one hand in happy baby. Alternating whenever your energy guides you. Or maybe you're in a full happy baby. Both legs bent. Feel free to alternate or just stay with both legs bent. We'll be here for five more breaths. So five. Four, maybe relaxing even more, opening up even more. Three, 
feeling the freedom to invite loving kindness to one more breath. Now let's exhale. Let those legs come to the earth again. Hands can be anywhere you want, any expression with the arms. We'll rest on our backs again. It's Shavasana. Now give yourself as many breaths as you need before rolling to one side and rising to mountain pose. So maybe you twist a little bit on the ground or maybe you move through a couple cat cows. It's like putting that destination of Tadasana in a GPS and then we get to choose the route, that similar ETA. So collectively meeting in Tadasana, in that mountain pose, whenever you're ready. Maybe your energy today is really asking for a little bit more Shavasana. Can you rest in Shavasana? Have that dog leash or strap or scarf just at the side for now. We're gonna use it after we breathe just a little bit. <clears throat> when you get to your mountain pose, let's ground our feet together. Shine the palms forward or towards the thighs. And then maybe you'll inhale, reach up that right hand over and it's gonna draw that right knee and then let it come down and bring the hand down. Bring the left arm up and over, kind of ground that right, we just bend that leg and down, and then just gonna go back and forth. Just kind of getting some movement above and below, kind of sinking them together, almost as if we were joining that ether, that akash, with that earth, that prithivi, above and below. And now as you go to each side one more time, Let's ground those feet. You can be as wide as you want, as close together as you want. And we'll reach up to sky, that into that akash, that ether, and then exhale down to that earth, bend the knees, rise, opening up the backs of the legs, opening up these shoulders and breathing, joining that breath, that movement. Now let's do it for three more breaths. So three, and two. Nice job, guys. And one. We'll end in a forward fold on an exhale. So folding forward, drape that body kind of over the, the legs, of the elbows, maybe firing the opposite elbows with the hands. We can sway side to side, maybe bringing those elbows almost to the outside of that leg because we twist a little bit as we sway. And now one more time to each side with our sway. And then bring it to the middle, elbows come to the middle, bend the knees, rise up. Bring those arms above the head and then we'll exhale, bring the hands behind the back. If that feels good, pull those hands towards the back of the mat, or if that's not so hot on the, on the shoulders, bring hands to the hips. And now we'll fold it forward halfway, Ardha Uttanasana, and reach those hands to the sky if you have an interlace. If you have your hands on your hips, just kind of reach those elbows together. The scapula is pinching, finding our half forward fold. Now maybe you notice, oh, I'm activating the side body and that strong core that I have. We'll be here. Maybe you sway those hands side to side. If they're gripped, opening the shoulders. If you have your hands on your hips, you can kind of dip one shoulder down and then the other. <clears throat> and now exhale. On your next inhale, we'll rise. 
And exhale, hands to heart or hands at the side, Tadasana. Really nice job, guys. Maybe we find that mudra with that left palm facing the heart, that right thumb over top of that left thumb, bring it up to that throat, inviting that openness, inviting that freedom. Now maybe scan the body and see where you might invite a little physical freedom or physical openness. Just with our little bit of movement that we've done already, was there anything that was like, hey, kind of sticky? Just breathe that freedom into your space. Now maybe just for fun, we kind of flap the wings of the Garuda Mudra, lift it above the head. If we had a light in the right spot, it would be a shadow put on the wall. And then release the hands to the side. Let's find our strap or that leash or that scarf. <clears throat> and then because everybody's rotation on the shoulders are different, maybe your hands are going to be super duper wide. Maybe your hands are going to be just shoulder width apart. We're gonna do what we call sh that shoulder flossing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna just go up above the head and see what feels right as far as that distance apart on how easy that is to lift. And then maybe we bring it behind us, just kind of dropping those arms back. And that's where I usually like, oh, I need them a little wider. So really just listening and not forcing anything just kind of a smooth movement, not forcing it to go too low, not forcing the hands to be too close together. And we'll just lift it in front of the body, kind of pulling on the strap as if we were trying to kind of pull it apart. So it's kind of taut, there's not much slack. So it comes in front, we'll lift it up above the body, pulling it apart. We'll bring it behind us really gently, maybe it only goes a little bit down. Maybe even if you can bring it all the way down to the low back, you don't. We're moving with a lot of awareness here, these shoulders that sometimes get so sticky because of our lifestyles. Inviting in that freedom that openness. Sometimes our shoulders, we may as well call them shoulders. Oh, I should do this. I should, I should. And we hold that tension, that upper body. Take a break if you need to roll the shoulders out. And then maybe you lift that scarf or strap above the head. And pausing at the top, what we did earlier when we bent to one side, we're gonna take that strap with us. So pulling it apart, maybe leaning over to the left or the right, you can glance up at the elbow, maybe down towards the foot or the hand, pulling the strap apart, feeling that armpit open just a little. These shudders, just letting go of those things that we feel that we should do, that we really have no interest in doing, there's really no point. We just put some pressure on ourselves. Let's bring it back to the middle. Drop it down and just kind of roll those shoulders out. Maybe you even lift them up and drop them down just a couple times. Uh-huh. And then we'll inhale, lift it up above the head again. Pull it apart. Mm -hmm. And then go over to the other side, the opposite side that you just did. Looking up or down. And then letting go again, any pressure, inviting in that freedom. Maybe it's in the form of just awareness, like, oh yeah, I really didn't need to clean my baseboards today. I can maybe relax in this wintry day. A couple more breaths, guys. And then let's bring it up to the middle again. You can lower it down in front. And then let's just drop it in front of us. Just let it go. Uh-huh. 
Bring the palms down. Let the fingertips be heavy. Feel those shoulders maybe tingle, that energy moving. And let's find our Garuda Mudra, that left hand facing in, the right palm on top, the thumbs interlaced, bring it in front of that throat chakra. You can face the short edge of your, we're facing the long edge, ground into your feet. Breathe in. Now exhale, ground that left foot, and we'll step the right foot back, finding our crescent lunge. Keep that mudra if you can. You can lower that foot down, the heel down if you want, or come on the ball of the foot. Let's stand nice and tall. Let's inhale, lift that eagle hand, those eagle hands up to the sky. Press the thumbs into each other. Press the right into the left, left into the right. So you feel that active bicep, the active arm, active shoulder. Let's breathe in. And then we'll exhale, draw the hands apart. Feel that freedom and openness, just letting go. Any silly shoulds. Hands float down. And let's sweep the arms up so they're in front of us again. Interlace the thumbs, finding that mudra. So our hands come in front, then the thumbs come together. Bring it in front of that throat. Uh-huh. And let's lift it above the head. Pressing thumbs into each other so there's that resistance. The shoulders are active. And then let those wings come apart, opening up. Yes. Then when you get those hands to the side, pause. Get there before I do. Let's sweep them behind our back. Maybe finding those thumbs together or interlacing the hands or finding the hands and the hips. And then from here, let's just bow and surrender into our humble warrior. The chest hovering over that thigh. Maybe we lower that knee down into a low lunge to surrender or you can stay lifted. Our humble warrior. Breathing in and out. Now then exhale, let's lift the heart, lift the chest, lift the shoulders, keep those hands together. And that heart lifts, let's release those hands, feel that freedom and openness, letting gravity just draw those arms out and up. Let them go as far, as high as they just naturally go. And then when they don't rise anymore, just let them drift down to your side. And then let's step that right foot forward to meet the left. And we just wiggle out the hips and sway a little side to side. Giving a little break to that active left leg, that strong right leg. Yeah, you guys got it. Nice. And now we'll ground in our Kadasana. Bring that mudra up in front of the throat, left hand facing the throat, that right thumb grabs that left thumb, pull it apart, give a little resistance, and then relax it. Ground that right foot. Step the left foot back. Finding your crescent lunge. Now bring that, those active thumbs in so they're pulling against each other. Float it up to the sky. Release the wings, bring them out to the side with those arms float out and down. And float the arms up in front of the shoulders. Thumbs meet, draw that back in front of the throat. Now lift it up to the sky, those thumbs pressing into one another. There's that resistance and active arms. Let the hands come apart. Nice, floating down to the sides. And now pause. Exhale to bring the hands together behind the back or opposite elbows, pull it back towards that heel. Maybe check in and feel into your space. And when you're ready, bow over that leg, finding your expression of humble warrior. And lower that left knee if you need to. But we're gonna bow, not just in reverence for whatever resonates with your heart, but just for the ability to be here that reverence for a practice, that reverence to experience being alive today. And 
Now when you're ready, exhale and begin to lift the heart and the shoulders over the hips. And then when you're ready, you can release those hands and feel that freedom. There's no resistance in the shoulders anymore. Yeah. And then find that Garuda Mudra in front of your throat. Shift the weight into that right foot so we can step the left foot forward. Ground the feet, maybe close the eyes. That Garuda Mudra, inviting openness. Breathe in. And now exhale. Let's ground the left foot, step the right foot back and pivot the foot towards the long edge. If you have your Garuda Mudra, just take it along with you. Otherwise, find it when you get there, both feet facing that long edge. With your Garuda Mudra nice and steady, you can either have that resistance by pulling the thumbs together or just let it be, be more passive. So however you want to express even your mudra, we'll bend the knees and fold forward just a little bit. Maybe when you get that part parallel with the earth, you decide to bend over more into a fold, by the good forward fold. And now release those arms, maybe bring the hands to the thighs or the knees, maybe to the feet. Let the crown of the head be parallel with the floor. And see if you can find some freedom here. Some effortlessness in the arms or the head. And now we'll exhale, bring that left hand under the heart. If you need to grab a block, if that's comfortable for you and your wide-legged forward fold, we're gonna come into a twist. So ground the left hand on whatever you need to ground it on, and we'll bring the right arm to sky, shining that heart towards the right side. Maybe when you get that hand towards the sky, you just kind of rotate the wrist, and maybe the shoulder joint follows, so then you're kind of moving that shoulder around. Maybe it makes noise, maybe it doesn't. And then exhale, bring the right hand down to the block. Let's bend the knees and we'll rise up to our extended round pose. So feet ground, arms reach up. You can bring your arms to your heart space or your hands to your heart space or your arms out nice and wide. Whatever feels right. And then from here, if you wanna find your Garuda Mudra, you can. If you want those wings nice and spanned out, keep them flared out. We'll bend the knees, exhale to fold halfway, heart parallel with the floor and the block. And then maybe bring the crown of the head parallel with the floor. And float those hands to rest on the legs. And then when you're ready, ground that right hand under the heart and then sweep that left hand to sky. And then when you get that arm up, maybe you rotate the wrist and you rotate that shoulder around. And go, inviting in that freedom. Let's exhale, bring the hand back into the heart. Let's bend the knees a little bit so we can bring those feet towards one another. And maybe we exhale and come down to our malasana, our yogic squat. We can sit on a block and maybe it's a little more passive. If that doesn't feel great to come down into that squat, you can come into your sumo and open those hips up. Or if you want to open the back up more, because our yoga squat also can open the back, maybe you come into just a forward fold. So we have options. You can forward fold, you can sumo, or you can malasana. But let's be here five breaths. Just breathing together. Being in these separate expressions. together collectively with our breath and our souls as one. And two. 
in one. Let's rise together from wherever we are, just rolling up, lifting up, standing together. Letting out a breath. And if you're facing your long edge, let's step to face the front of the mat, bringing our feet forward. Hands can be at heart. Maybe you find that Garuda Mudra. Any expression in Tadasana with the hands. Draw a breath in. And exhale, ground into that left foot. Let's step the right foot back. And then lower that right heel down, straighten that front leg. And then lift the left toes to the ground. So left heel digs in. The right foot is grounded. The front toes are lifted. And now maybe let's just try to lift that right heel off the ground. It can be up just a little bit, maybe a lot. Maybe you bring your arms out to stabilize. Maybe you lower the toes of the left foot, the right heel lifts, and then lower that right heel so both feet are flat. So we're gonna try that again. Any variation with those arms, maybe you find that wall. So we're gonna lift the left toes to the sky. Now maybe we slowly lift that right heel a little bit off the ground. It doesn't have to be a lot. You could slide a quarter underneath it. And maybe you could slide, I don't know, a Lego. <laughs> Lifting the heel, the right foot, toes of the left foot. All right, lower the left toes, lower the right heel. Bring the hands down to the side. Feel that relief in the arms. And now inhale, bring the arms up to sky. Uh-huh. Exhale, hinge forward at the waist. Reaching through the fingertips, ground that left foot, bring the right knee up. And then cross that right leg over. Let's find our eagle pose, Garudasana. Right leg comes over the left. Arms come out in front, right arm underneath, left arm on top. Maybe the backs of the hands meet. Maybe the palms meet. Maybe you can bring that right foot behind that left leg with effortlessness. Maybe not. Garudasana. Where do you feel freedom and openness? Now let's unwind those arms, bring those wings out into that wingspan. And then let's very mindfully unwrap those legs, bring them side by side. So now we're in a little chair, maybe arms are out wide. Bring the hands to the side, let those shoulders drop down, ground the right foot, step the left foot back on the balls, the ball of the left foot, lower the heel down, straighten that right leg. Here we are. And our cars go tanasana, base. All right, we're going to lift the toes of that right foot, heel into the ground. Feel nice and steady. Maybe you bring your feet wider than normal, finding that base, finding a wall if you need it. I'm going to scoot closer to my wall so it's there. So toes lift. And now lift the heel of that left foot. See if you can find steadiness. It's a lot of work for the core and the side body. Maybe your gaze is very helpful to look at something that's not moving. So now lower down the left heel. Now lower down the toes. Exhale, release the hands. Nice job. Let's stand up nice and tall. You're rolling shoulders up and back. Notice your side body. On an exhale, notice your core, maybe your belly button and all that space down below it to the side and above it, below those ribs. Now with your mind there, your inner eye, notice those muscles, that area when you lift the right toes off the ground. Maybe that right side body, you notice. Now lift the left heel off the ground, maybe you notice the left side body. And we'll just be here, kind of balancing mindfulness. Two more breaths. 
Now on an exhale, lower down the left heel, lower down the right toes, bend that right knee, arms out like an eagle, bring the left leg up and over that right leg. Arms can come out in front, left arm under, right arm on top. Garudasana, table pose. Do you feel your heart sore like an eagle? Do you feel yourself land with intention like an eagle? Let's draw a breath in. And then exhale, unfurl those wings, bring those wings out nice and wide. Uh-huh. Our next exhale unwinds those legs, plants the left foot, and maybe those hands come down. Maybe they stay out to the side. Maybe they find your eagle mudra. Whatever lands with you. And we'll be here for two breaths. Now let's exhale, bend the knees. Fold it forward. Maybe you hang that head heavy and long, back stretching. And then when you're ready, you can make your way to Malasana if you want. We'll meet on our backs. So however you get there, maybe you bend the knees, come into a ball. Maybe you come into a tabletop and you move your hips and your back just a little bit. Anything. That might feel nice before we come into Shavasana. We're going to lie on our backs. We're going to do a couple twists. But making our way there, find if there's anything you need, offer it to yourself. And then when you get to your backs, you can rock side to side. Hug the knees in and send that left leg long, drawing that right knee to the chest. And now let's exhale, send the right arm out to the side and that left hand holds that right knee just tenderly and sweetly as we cross over to the left. That right knee coming to the earth and maybe you stack it on the block. Sometimes I, I let my hand come to my fist if I stack my left fist under my knee. Just twisting over for a few breaths. I didn't go any effort in the right leg when that foot kind of dangled. Relax your shoulders. And soften. The inside of that left leg. Now let's exhale, bring that knee in, roll onto the back, hug both knees in. And when you're ready, send the right leg long, the block, maybe coming over to the right side. Exhale to drop the left knee over across the right leg. Arms can reach to the sides. And exhale, you can draw that knee off the block of the floor. Bring the back to the earth. You can hug the knees in, send the legs to the sky. We'll meet in our shavasana. Just offering any movements that would really just support you today in your practice of openness and freedom. For loving kindness in your space.
And as you arrive in Shavasana, just consciously letting go of any effort in your body, any tension or holding. And allow for this pause, this rest.
the remaining on your back in Shavasana for our loving kindness meditation, or you can gently roll up to a seated position. Might go just a few minutes over today. And just say to yourself, may I be filled with loving kindness. May I be held in compassion. May I be free from pain. May I be at peace. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be held in compassion. May I be free from pain. May I be at peace. Now bring into mind someone that we hold dear, someone that we love. And say to that person, May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be held in compassion. May you be free from pain. May you be at peace. Now bring into mind someone that we see in passing or have seen. Maybe someone that we've never seen before and we'll see later. And say to that person, may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be held in compassion. May you be free from pain. May you be at peace. Now visualizing someone or something that we maybe disagree with or are having a challenging situation with. And say to that person or thing or organization, may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be held in compassion. May you be free from pain. And may you be at peace. can hold this space for as long as you'd like. 
before we can close together. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om.